Timo Krakowski is with a company called Forvia Hella, and what are you showing at the battery show here? Yeah, hey, glad to be here. Today we are showing um, our product portfolio of the electrification. We are here in a joint booth uh, with uh, Automotive Power, who we invested in through uh, our Hella Ventures activities in and Silicon and Valley. And we should add that AMP for the people and who are familiar yes, with yes, the AMP. Yes, AMP, brand. exactly. Right. And uh, but so far today here we are showing our products separately in one booth, but today we are showing our and Automotive Power shows there. Well, let's take a look at what you've got Absolutely. here. Absolutely. So basically here you can see the entire uh, product portfolio of um, Hella within an electrification you, you system. You make all this stuff. Exactly, we are making all so, that so stuff. So you're not into batteries, you're not into electric motors, but you're Correct. into just about everything else. Exactly, so we provide really everything in terms of um, um, electric um, power, uh, ECUs for um, actuators and sensors throughout the entire vehicle system. And I would suggest we are going through the um, system along the energy flow, that's good for everybody, right? So we need, we need the flow, let's go that. Starting with the E-Lit actuator, which is uh, a charging lid. Every car needs to have it. This one is a smart actuator, basically triggered by uh, motion or a soft touch which is special because it allows for automated charging through a robot for example in the future also it operates upwards it's an up uplifted uh, lid and therefore it protects the charger or uh, the charging port for rain if you have that exposure and don't have a cover and you're talking this component up that's here that's correct that's the one and, and, that's and the so initial it's got a motion port. detector so, and explain that a little bit more thoroughly. So the motion, uh, the motion capturing could be through the vehicle architecture, through any kind of uh, camera or sensors who are allowing that. And we get the signal, but we are operating really in a, in a vehicle architecture. We can receive that signal or through a sensor which can detect a soft touch like our shake, for example. Mm -hmm. So we have it integrated or separately because it has to be on the surface of the car. Okay, but I, I still don't fully understand what it does. It, this is when I go to plug in? That's correct, yes. Okay, and it's... So what? if you do it manually, you really don't need an automated one. But you have, for example, automated uh, vehicles or automated driving. When you have uh, valet functionality, for example, where you also use it as at the same time to charge. Mm -hmm. So there, if there is a robot, when you just park at the right position and the robot tries to charge your uh, vehicle and with that, the um, the operation, the motion will operate then the lid and open it for now that. Now I get it. You guys are thinking way ahead. You're already thinking about robots right. plugging in the car. Yep, exactly. And that is the future. A lot of OEMs are talking about this. Got it, got it. Okay. Then following this, uh, the stream of the energy, this is our onboard charger, high density onboard charger, much smaller than conventional onboard charger due to the high density design. Um, it's transformerless and it receives energy and distributes that in the vehicle architecture where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. It also acts as a bi-directional charger. What does that mean? It means you can tap in the vehicle as a power source, for example, for your, car, uh, for your um, house, when you have a power outage, or if you're an outdoor, where you need to plug in your radio, or whatever you wanna do, so your vehicle will turn into a generator with that functionality. What I also love about bi-directional charging is it opens up the possibility that I as an EV owner can buy electricity at low rates and sell it back exactly. into the grid at higher rates, maybe make some money off it. Correct, that's also possible. And that's really the future where we see a lot of government programs are changing the way of uh, that uh, commercial aspects of that. Yeah. Okay. So very interesting, yeah. Um, from there on, we are going for the high voltage DC-DC converter. That essentially converts what we receive from the chargers into the necessary voltage. Why we need that is because we do not have a standardized charging uh, voltage operating, operating voltage. We have sometimes 400 volt, we have 800 volt. So this will make sure 
the vehicle can tap into any charger available. You don't want to be at the charging station and find out you can only receive 800, but it's a 400 volt charger. So this one can allow all the flexibility you need for that. Mm -hmm. Also here, very unique design, much smaller and lighter than conventional DC-DC converters uh, in the market. Mm -hmm. It also can downgrade the uh, energy, the voltage to 12 volt, for example. We see battery electric vehicles still have a 12 volt battery, lithium iron battery, because we have a lot of consumers, like the radio, which are operating on the 12 volt system. And also, very important, it still operates independently from the high voltage battery pack in case, for example, you are uh, parked and you still need access for car access. Right. Therefore, this uh, energy source, the power source, is very important and independent from the high voltage battery pack. That's right. Or like in an accident, God Absolutely. forbid, you have to disconnect, disconnect the high voltage for safety, but you still need to be able to unlock the doors or put the windows down, and that's why you need the 12 you volt. You stole the, the thunder for me. Volt. I yeah. just wanted to get to the safety <laughs> aspect, but that it is, exactly. Very right. important aspect. Yeah. The convenience is one aspect, but safety is the crucial part of this, right. that we really can operate during an accident. Yeah. Okay, one more to go. Well, actually, oh. I would like to uh, go one more Bring here, because what is important then, all of that leads to the high voltage battery management system where we from Hella monitor and make sure the battery packs, the battery cells are tapped into and also charged at the right location. So here our battery management unit comes into play combined with our cell monitoring units. These are very close to the cells, but the battery management unit can be independently placed Sometimes OEMs are combining these together, mm -hmm. depending on the size of the battery. But that's very important that we have them the capability to do it separately due to scalability. Depending on how many cells you have, you need more cell monitoring units, but only one logical unit. Mm -hmm. But this is the, uh, the heart of uh, the battery management system, and therefore we are providing this directly. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then one more, right? Right. You've got, wow, this so, thing. Now we did follow the, the energy flow, right? Where need, do we need to go? But then we are coming to the need of all these components to be cooled, right? They're generating a lot of heat. So therefore we have the cooling control hub, which is a smart multi-wave system in a very compact design, providing the coolant in three different areas where it's needed. We have power electronics, which have a lot of consumptions uh, uh, and, and generating heat. Then we have the battery packs, which needs to be uh, cooled. And also the cabin needs to be cooled. We like air condition. So this provides coolant to the cabin and r saves a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. So that is a very flexible design. We can, uh, we can do it uh, one system, we can, do, we can operate in three systems. So very scalable and adaptable to the size of the vehicle or to the vehicle architecture. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. It's amazing how much goes into being able to have an electric vehicle. You know, we always think, as I said earlier, the batteries and the electric motor, but boy, there's a lot more to it than that. Right, it's very complex, to be honest. We see, uh, we see the trend going into uh, simplifications. Mm -hmm. So we have more and more talks about combining products, right. as I mentioned here for smaller battery packs but also combining other products like the high voltage DC-DC and the onboard charger, depending on the, uh, the vehicle needs or the OEMs, how they want to set up their system. Yeah. Timo, thanks for your time, very interesting. Thank you, John, it's yeah. a pleasure. As experts in direct current switching and control, Sheldbau is at the front leading the charge in developing and manufacturing the necessary electromechanical components for the future. Each system and application will require conditions in which a stable connection, secure contact, and safe control of power are vitally important. These challenging conditions are what make Sheldbau qualified for this future.